we are now at session uh, keynote session 4 uh, and i'll be chairing this session so for the keynote session 4 the topic will be the legal requirements challenges and issues of aircraft noise reduction that will be presented by a young professor technologist Ricky Liu Chi Liang head of engineering corporate corporate jet mro sr aviation before we could begin i would like to introduce uh, professor uh, technologist ricky uh, to you so ricky liu is currently the head of engineering of sr aviation sinjan bernhard he is an experienced aircraft engineer in aviation industry since 1989 He holds Civil Aviation Authority, United Kingdom, and Malaysian aircraft maintenance license. A registered engineer with the Board of Engineers Malaysia, he experienced and observed the issues and challenges in aircraft noise reduction technologies and developments. He is a strong proponent of industry-academia collaboration to achieve sustainable aviation industry. You can see and you can listen to his question that he posed just now to our uh, previous keynote uh, speaker. Um, he is a certified aerospace and aviation professional technologist at Malaysia Board of Technologist and certified ASEAN and engineering technologist. He also holds an MBA from Victoria University of Australia and an adjunct professor. of our university university putra malaysia at the department of aerospace engineering he is also listed as a national industry expert aerospace under ministry of human resources malaysia he is also a recipient of sunway education star award 2017 and uh, an active technologies award in 2019 So without further ado I would like to uh invite uh adjunct professor uh technologist Ricky Liu to uh, present his keynote uh, speak. Uh, <clears throat> good morning and uh, thank you uh, session chair uh, for the great introduction. Congratulations to uh UPM. Uh congratulations to uh Saris uh for Uh, overcoming the challenges of the uh, COVID-19, yeah, and uh, you have actually uh, successfully uh, organized the uh, ISSA Symposium 10- 2020. I still remember when I first read the announcement uh, on this uh, ISSA, ISSA 2020 to be held in Langkawi. I, I actually have a, a, a big question. With the current uh, COVID-19, uh, it must be very challenging for the organizer. Yeah, uh, not only in UPM, but also uh, Saris uh, and us and also other collaborator to actually get it uh, get this uh, uh, activity organized well. Nevertheless, uh, today and yesterday, I can see uh, that the uh, session has been organized well. Uh, we have good speakers. Uh, we have uh, from the universities, from Saris, and also from the uh, the uh, government agency. And uh, first of all, thank you, uh, thank you so much for inviting uh, the people from the industry uh, to participate in symposium, uh, a very very important symposium like sustainable aviation like this. Uh, when I was asked, when I was first invited uh, by. Uh, The organizing chairman, uh, Professor IRTS Dr. Rahim, uh, to say something uh, on this uh, uh, during this uh, symposium. The first thing that comes into my mind is that what are the issues that we have uh, we are facing now uh, in terms of sustainability, and uh, eventually I've decided that uh, I would like to uh, talk about the noise. the noise of the aircraft. Uh, why do I want to talk about this? Because um, there are several uh, uh, incidents and several occasions 
where I was actually struck uh, uh, by certain regulatory requirements, uh, airport authorities, uh, even our flight operations to certain countries or airports are affected, are affected. And therefore, I decided to actually take up this, uh, this topic, the legal re requirements, challenges and issues uh, of aircraft uh, noise reduction. All right, a brief, uh, a brief uh, introduction of the contents of my presentation today. I will roughly brief uh, go through um, the uh, brief history of our aircraft evolution. Uh, that is actually in the early, early, early days, maybe one, 200 years ago. Where was the focus at that time? And then I'm going to zoom down to sustainable aviation from the noise perspective, from the noise perspective. Sustainable aviation covers many, many, many aspects. And today I will be just covering one aspect of it, uh, which is actually the aircraft noise. Then I will take all of us through into the issues and the legal requirements uh, that has actually uh, uh, part that is actually part of the aircraft noise uh, reduction uh, initiative. Why it is started? You know what were the legal cases and all those. And also, we will zoom into the engineering and technology, uh, some of the designs, some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, current problems that we are facing, and also in the within the problem we see the opportunities for researchers, uh, for scientists, for engineers to come up with a better solution. Okay, and I'm going to conclude, uh, 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 make a conclusion in the end. Okay. Now, a brief history of aircraft evolution. I'm not sure how many of us have actually gone into the study of our flying history, our aircraft history. Did we, did we actually look into it? We are amazed with the airplane today, 747, 737, uh, 787. We are amazed with the power of the engine that can produce hundreds of thousands of thrust. But have we actually uh, moved back in time and see how did we actually evaluate? What was the focus? What was the primary focus at that about 100, 100 200 years ago? What were humans trying to achieve? You know, because at that time, sustainability was not the focus. At that time, at the initial stages of our aircraft design and flying history, sustainability was not the focus. What were the primary objective at that time? And people keep on failing. And a lot of people, a lot of people has actually died. A lot of people has actually uh, injured themselves. A lot of people also created history because at that time they were struggling with four primary objectives of flying of an airplane. Now, an airplane, we are talking about a machine heavier than air flying machine. We are not talking about balloon. We are not talking about gliders. We are really talking about a flying machine which is actually are able to generate enough lift to carry out the, to carry the weight of the pilot and the airplane that was the first focus how do they how do we is able to generate lift on an airplane we are not talking about glider glider we will, we will just glide with the air, air with the wind you are not self sustaining but how how far can you glide and how many person can you carry so there is a very lot of limitation in glider so eventually the uh, Orville's, Orville and Wilbur Wright, they, a, they were the ones who were able to cure or come up with a solution with these four problems, to overcome these four problems. They managed to have a propulsion system to move the airplane forward, to generate enough lift to carry the weight of the airplane and also the pilot. They were able to control the airplane. If you all know, uh, Mr. Otto Lilienthal, he died 
he died. He died after falling off from his uh, falling off from his glider. Why? He was not able to control the airplane. And the, the glider just went up. Uh, sudden gust of wind pushed it up, and he actually fell down from the glider, and he died the next day because it cannot control. So the third objective that the, they wanted to do is that the focus of how do we sustain the speed and altitude. A glider cannot sustain the speed and altitude. Those like this auto lilienthal one, once you lost height, once you lost the wind airflow, you actually drop. But we want a machine to actually able to sustain speed and altitude. You can climb, you can roll, you can turn, you can pitch. That was the focus of the Wright brothers who have tried very, very hard. And the last problem, how do we get the skills to fly an airplane? Those were the challenges in the initial stages during the evolution of airplane. It is a very, very challenging and it took a lot of time and life, you know, for people to overcome this problem. And the Wright brothers, he did it. They did it and they managed to come up with the first initial flying machine heavier than air that's able to, that's able to control speed, uh, uh, sustain speed and altitude and controllable. And they were the one who first taught the initial pilots, flying pilots in history. So at that time, that was the focus. You want aerodynamics, you want powerful engine, you want good flight controls, you want the uh, skills required to fly the plane. So in the next, in the next, uh, in the next uh, 40 years or, or 50 years, that were the focus. The airplane, the design, the technology kept on improving, kept on improving. So we have a one passenger airplane, we increased to two passenger, then we increased to four passenger, you know, five passenger, 10, 30, 50. And eventually now we have airplanes today that keep on increasing in size, keep on increasing in their bigger engines, you know, and, and, and we are capable of flying intercontinental 12 or th uh, 12 hours flight nonstop. So human, human being, the people in the world has been able to achieve it after the Orville and Wilbur uh, Wilbur Wright, you know, we have the 727, we have the 707. Those are the, you know, we have the Comet airplane, you know, those are the airplanes that were so advanced at that particular of time, so powerful. But it was during the 1960s, it was beginning of the 1960s to today, there is a rise of issues because there are concern that are concerned about aircraft, about aviation, and towards the environment. That is the time during the 60s and the 70s. That is the time that people start to have problems with the airplane, because in particular, from my perspective today, from the aircraft noise, that resulted in damages to property and health of the people. That resulted, you know, human being now are the airplane technology keep on developing until what such a time that we cannot take it because the technology is not controlled. It is not friendly. You know, it is affecting the human being. So because of that, 1960s, those are the time the rise in litigation issues towards aircraft towards airlines, you know, people are initiating litigation, litigation issues because why it is affecting their health. Now, before we go into what kind of health aspect are affected by noise, let's look at the definition of noise first. Okay. Now we know about noise. We don't like noise. When there is noise, we don't feel comfortable. Correct. Now, for example, Every morning in the airport, in my hangar, I actually conduct a morning briefing, morning briefing. 
and our hangar is not very far away from the taxiway in Subang Airport. Each time, each time an airplane lands and a taxi in front of our hangar, actually it created very, very loud, uncomfortable noise that I actually have to stop the briefing until the airplane cross away, going further away, then only I will continue my briefing. So noise is perceived as an environmental pollution. As far as IKAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, the Federal Aviation Administration, EASA Authority, noise is being perceived as an environmental pollution. We know people now are going about green environment, sustainable world, sustainable living, you know, protect the environment. And noise is one of it that is of very concern in the aviation industry. So much so, the law, the rules, the regulations, the authorities are coming in to actually control the noise, which actually has a chain reaction towards the engineers, researchers, and the scientists. What are we going to do about it? Okay, what is noise? What is noise? What is actually noise? Noise actually is a pressure energy pulses. It is a form of energy that pulses through the air, generated by a vibrating source with an audible range of 20 to 20,000 hertz, which is audible. We can hear it from 20 to 20,000 hertz. That is the definition of the noise transmitted through the air. Now, the intensity and the frequency of the pulse, uh, pulsation, that is the one that we are actually tolerating. So if it does not affect our discomfort, if it does not cause us, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, 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 feeling, uh, a, a bad feeling, you know, a negative feeling, you know, a stress, uh, it actually depends on the intensity and frequency of the pulsation. So actually, when noise, uh, noise impact or noise received by the human, it actually affect the human comfort. Human don't feel comfortable if it's very noisy. Now the noise also affect produced by the airplane also affects the aircraft structure and the systems. It does. Not only it pro it noise, not only it affects the human comfort, but it also can cause animal discomfort, even insects discomfort. Why? Because it is a pulsation of the air. It is a pulsation energy through the air that affects our senses. Our senses. So in the past, in the past, what is the health impact? Why does the people want to start litigation issues? Why does the people want to take the aircraft manufacturer, the aircraft operator? Why do they want to take them to the court? Because the health impact caused them hearing impairment, damages to the hearing. It actually can cause hypertension. These are actually the studies done by researchers it actually can cause hypertension, high blood pressure. It also, it also affects, it might also affect the heart disease. It causes annoyance, sleep disturbance. When there's aircraft noise, cannot sleep. So much so, some of the airports in the world, in this region, they actually had the curfew. We call it the airport curfew. Now, airport curfew is even the Seletar Airport, Subang Airport doesn't have any curfew, but Saleta Airport, uh, the uh, uh, some of the airport in Indonesia, uh, even in Hong Kong, um, there are only certain period of time you can take off and land in that particular airport. That is what we call curfew. Usually, the night time, night time is the time that we actually initiate or start the curfew. During this curfew. This is the time where people rest, people actually uh, need to sleep, 
And actually, this is the um, the reason is because sleep disturbance, aircraft noise uh, uh, causes sleep disturbance. Now the aircraft, the aircraft noise also help also decrease the school performance. Of course, you are very noisy in school. You need to teach. You need to talk. When there's aircraft noise, you actually get distracted. You actually get annoyed. Therefore, school performance and also hearing loss, especially people like aircraft engineers. We work in the airport all the time. We work in the airport all the time. Uh, we actually, uh, especially last time when I was in MAS, every two years, every two years, we have to do a hearing check at our medical center. Why? Because we want to detect whether we have any hearing loss or not because of our exposure of the aircraft noise. Yeah. Stress, you know, noise can cause stress in people. People don't feel comfortable. People feel pressured, you know. People feel un uh, uh, easily get angry. Why? Noise causes the stress. And also, increase of workplace accidents. You know, accidents happen. There was a, because of noise. You see, last time we had the aircraft that actually taxi in in one of the bay. And the noise is not so noisy. And there was a guy who was actually very new to the app to work in the airport. And actually, he was walking towards the invisible rotating propeller. And people was trying to call them. People was trying to call, shout at him, and he kept on walking. Of course, after that, he realized that ah, there was nothing happened. But this is the, the noise of the aircraft engine actually increased the workplace accident rate. This is one example. Therefore, therefore, if you come to my company, you will see that all of us, all it is mandatory for all of our engineering team members to always carry a safety whistle. Why? Because we have to shout. I mean, we have to blow the whistle because shouting does not is not effective. We have to blow the whistle. So sometimes when I go have for meeting and all those, and I wear my pass, where my my actually my uh, whistle is hang on the on the airport pass, people always ask me. Why, why, why is there a whistle? Are you a referee? Of course, I'm not a referee, you know. But that is a safety, small little device, less than one ringgit, can save the life of the people. Just less than one ringgit. Yeah, so why? To overcome noise. Uh, noise has also been studied to cause, yeah, been studied and it, is, it can actually stimulate aggression. People become aggressive. You know, people become very rough, rowdy, you know, because of noise. And then we also have people who have antisocial behaviors. You know, it actually, because it's so noisy, people just become antisocial. I don't want to go there because it's so noisy. You know, I don't want to work here. I don't want to work there because it's so noisy. So the other study is that the airport noise, yeah, has also been linked to high blood pressure. So if you look at the whole listing, of the health impact due to noise of airplane, you will realize that it is affecting us. I mean, we are happy we have a good airplanes. We are happy we have the a high capacity, ultra long range uh, airplane, but the no what are we gonna do about the noise? What are we gonna do about it? So this is the issue that we're gonna talk today. Now you can see from this uh, slide here, yeah, this is only one snapshot of the cases. Yeah, these cases is a lot of cases. This started since the 1960s. People are still taking the airport authority. People are still taking the aircraft operator. People are still taking even the manufacturer to the court. To the court. Because why? They complain that the noise is affecting their health. And guess what? Freedom from noise pollution is a basic human rights according to the court. So many of the cases, many of these cases won the case. Won the case because it's a natural, it's a natural uh, kind of human rights. So the chances of 
the uh, the uh, the human the the uh, people to win the case is very very high. Therefore, it is our duty as a researcher, as a scientist, yeah, you know, as the people from the industry, to understand the whole scenario, and then do something about it because you know human is is has always have the right. Just like you, we are at home. And every day, every day the aircraft pass by our house and it is creating a lot of noise and very noisy. You actually feel, you actually feel uncomfortable, right? You actually feel that, what is this? You know, I cannot live peacefully. You will take the court to case as well. That is, therefore, it is actually the human right. And actually, it is our duty of aircraft and engine and system designers to look into ways how are we going to overcome this problem through innovation, through technology, through application of the material principles? All this, we need to actually look into it. And, and I'm very happy because why? Uh, through a symposium like this, this is where the researcher meets from various countries. The students meet, the lecturers, the professor meet, and you can also see the government agency meet and people from the industry also comes in. Why? Because we have a common problem. The noise coming out from the aircraft and the engines. Yeah. And these are all the legal cases. Majority of the cases have won, has won the case. That actually pushes us to look into new, new uh, uh, ideas and new uh, inventions. Now, I'll give a brief description of the noise level, a noise level that we are experiencing in our daily life, just for comparison purposes. An aircraft jet that is taking off from the airport, and if you are 25 meters away, it will actually cause your eardrum to rupture. And that is 150 decibel A. 150 decibel A, already enough to cause our eardrum structure. But how strong is this? So just imagine today we are vacuum, we are vacuum at home. We are using, a, today, you know, we use a vacuum cleaner at the home and then we try to vacuum our dining hall, you know, our hall and all those. That vacuum cleaner noise actually created approximately 70 decibels A. And you know, sometimes people don't don't feel comfortable, right? When the when the vacuum cleaner started in the house, and then people start, hey, yeah, faster, 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 get it done, right? And that is only hundred. That is only seventy decibels only. You know, imagine an aircraft taking off with having hundred fifty decibels. You know, and then let's go to let's go down to the library. In the library, the quietness of the library it is about forty decibels. 40 decibels A when we go to the library. Now, when we whisper to our friend, when we whisper to our children, you know, that is actually 20 decibel. And if we can hear our own breathing, yeah, especially when it's very, very quiet, sometimes we can even hear our breathing. That is about 10 decibel. So the range of the noise is actually, you can see from, uh, from 10 decibels uh, right up to 150 decibels, which is actually cause our drum rupture. So we have to bring the noise down from 150 to to what to what level? To a level where the authority has actually decided, and this this level kept on increase, uh, kept on decreasing, yeah, kept on decreasing, okay. What authority are we talking about here? Okay, the first litigation case based on my study is actually started in the 60s uh, in, in the United States. So United States was the first to come up with the noise standards of aircraft type and airworthiness certification, which is actually meant that your aircraft must be quiet enough, your engine must be quiet enough, and you must be certified by the FAA. That actually followed by International Civil Aviation Organization. 
and international civil aviation organization requirements, regulations are actually very close to the FAA. And IKO has actually announced the goal, the goal of the uh, noise, uh, aircraft noise reduction. Their goal is to reduce, uh, limit or reduce the number of people affected by significant aircraft noise. They already put it in the book and this has already started since the 60s, 70s, already started until today. So if you look at the, uh, this, uh, the diagram on my left, IQ, IKO type certificate details. This is one of the model of the airplane that I worked on uh, uh, before, similar to the models that I'm working in. You can see there is a statement that states there, noise standard. What is the noise standard? FAR, FAR means Federal Aviation Regulations Part 36. That is the initial standard, one of the very, very initial one. Today, this standard has actually already improved or increased, which I'm going to show with you later. Now, the documentations under the IKO documentations, if you want to study about the regulations, the law governing the aircraft noise, it is actually spelled out in the International Civil Aviation Organization and next year in 16, volume 11. And this volume keep on, keep on revising, eh? Because why? IKO is very advanced. Researchers like who we have today here, what you research and what you output will also be taken up by the IKO. And from there, they want to ensure the latest as safe and airworthiness noise technology is incorporated in the aircraft design, new aircraft design. As, as the study improves, better noise technology the authority wants it to be incorporated into the new aircraft design. Or the authority can tell you, no, 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 no. This noise level is still too high. You need to work something to a much lower level noise. This, because why? Enables the reduction in noise experience by the communities. This is what they want. And of course, there are a lot of documents. In every national aviation authority have their own documents. We have uh, EASA have their own documents. FAA have their own documents. Uh, even our, our CM have their own documents. And even the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore also have all these documents governing the noise. It must be certified. The airplane, your engines that we are going to design, the systems all must be governed by the, these uh, rules and regulations. So if you can see here, if you can see in this slide here, you can see a form by one of the aviation authority, Civil Aviation uh, Authority of Singapore, application for aircraft noise certificate. It is a law. We need to comply to it. We cannot just continue to build airplane, build, 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 but then it keep on harming the human being, cannot. So therefore, when you have an airplane, you need to apply for the noise certificate. And this noise certificate, what does it measure? They measure the lateral full power noise level, your aircraft full power noise level, your approach noise level, what is your approach, uh, what is your flyover noise level, what is your overflight noise level, and even your takeoff noise level. All these must be measured well. Must be measured. I still remember when we have our first new airplane that came uh, several years ago, and it is the first time this aircraft go into the, uh, if I may Remember Hong Kong airport. The first thing they ask is that from the airport authority, please send me your noise certificate. When we apply the flight permit to enter Hong Kong airport, before even they say yes or no, the next question they say, send me your noise certificate. <laughs> okay, so it is critical. It is critical. Now, on this graph here, I mentioned just now, uh, IQ Annex 16, Volume 1 Standards. All the standards are all there. On the right-hand side, you can see the noise level. We call it effective perceived noise level. And the graph uh, that is actually uh, um, showing what are your limit is, depending on your uh, takeoff weight of your airplane. 
So if you see the higher, the, the, the bigger the airplane, the limit also increases. But if your plane is smaller, so you have a slower limit of your noise level. So you can see from the graph here, and this is actually uh, extracted from the IKO Annex yeah, 16. Yeah? Approach limit, so the sideline limit, sideline limit means the side, of the, uh, the side of the airplane measured about 450 meters apart from its side, yeah? from the center line of the plane. We are talking about the, the uh, four engine, three engines, and uh, two engines uh, takeoff limits. It's all documented. And these are the requirements, okay? Now, this is an airplane that, uh, uh, that comes up from our flight manual, uh, noise certificate characteristics. You can see here, this, uh, this is a model of our airplane, a Citation Bravo. Um, the stage three requirements, yeah? The stage three requirements, the takeoff noise level is actually 73.7 um, uh, 73 .7, uh, EPN uh, dB, effective perceived noise decibel. That is actually 73, a takeoff is 73.7. 7, uh, but actually, our actual aircraft of this model is only 61.3. Sideline 85.2, approach is 91.2. And you can see the bottom, the actual of our aircraft type is actually much, much more less than that. So our aircraft meet the stage three requirements. Therefore, when we go and purchase the airplane, when we go and take delivery of the airplane, one of the responsibility of the duty engineers is actually to check there is this statement of uh, noise statement compliance. It is very important that we comply to this noise statement to ensure that um, our aircraft, when it comes back, will not have any issue flying into any countries because this airplane is now certified as required by the law, as required by the law. Okay. Well, wow. evolution of IKO noise, uh, 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 IKO noise uh, requirements, it started off in stage one. Stage one noise compliance, that was the older days. And then the stage two uh, requirements, that is actually somewhere in the uh, 70s, I think. And then we have the stage three, is actually somewhere in the 90s. 90s, they started, the, 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 the noise level keep on coming down now keep on come quieter and quieter and quieter. And then it, the, the last one was actually stage four, noise certification, even quieter. For airplanes that is produced after the uh, 2000, uh, during 2006, 2006, you have to meet stage four requirements. But today, this is the latest one. The FAA has actually initiated stage five noise requirement. Stage 5 IQO noise standards, effective 31st December 2020, 2020, which is actually next month. End of next month, there are stage 5 noise. So you can see, because of the impact of the noise is so strong, the, the noises stages keep on increasing to lower the aircraft noise as much as possible. As much as possible, because the law requires it. Okay, this, are the, this is the example of the uh, uh, noise measurement uh, point, reference point, yeah? Um, I'm not sure whether, um, if you look at this, uh, this uh, graph here, where the points where they take the measurement of the aircraft noise, you know, there are many times where we fly from uh, airport, you realize that immediately you started, the aircraft will started to roll, go to takeoff, and then actually lift up. Yeah, the aircraft airborne, and then you realize after a short while, the act the captain actually pulled back the throttle a bit, slightly. Why? Why? Why do you experience that? Because of the compliance with the noise level requirements, they will pull the throttle back so that to reduce to a to a safe climb speed, to reduce the noise. Once you have passed the threshold, another point, then you can increase the power again to continue. Why? Because there are residential areas in the vicinity, in the takeoff path. So these are the reference points. Yeah, approach reference point. You have actually a uh, uh, takeoff reference point. You have also sideline reference point. And also you have a brick release uh, reference point. The details about how to measure this is covered in the IQ documents very very clearly yeah 
very, very clearly. And we need to make sure that the, the engines or the airframe system that we design do not exceed the noise limit there. Okay, so this is also another uh, graph that shows that shows the noise footprint uh, of an airplane uh, taking off, of an airplane taking off from runway, full throttle, throttle cutback, noise reduction, uh, return back to full throttle. This is actually the uh, residential, uh, you can also see that the residential area uh, that is actually in the vicinity of the airport. This is exactly what, what, is, uh, what we have now in Subang. This is exactly what we have now, even in KLIA. A lot of houses are actually coming up, development, uh, huge development in the uh, Sepang area, KLIA, KLIA, KLIA area. Okay, so the noise covers, uh, control covers this area. Now, let's look at the aircraft. What are the sources of noise from an airplane? I mean, I believe many of you here, uh, 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 aeronautical engineers, aerospace engineers, aircraft engineers, you know, what are the areas on the airplane that actually known to cause noises? So from this diagram, you can see uh, the airframe itself actually does causes noise. You see, look at the flap, look at the landing gear, look at the landing gear doors, look at the slats, look at the, it, it, I mean, we always experience the moment the pilot would extend the gear, extend the uh, extend the uh, flaps you will hear huge sound huge noises around the plane okay in addition to the airframe we also have this uh, engine that is producing a lot of noise you know the engine rotating internal rotating parts are actually creating a lot of noise all these are the sources of noise so an airplane flying through the air is actually a whole noise source you know and, and that actually cross, causing a lot of discomfort to people. We need to minimize and reduce that as much as possible. Now, just a, just a quick uh, look through. Yeah, inside the engine, power plant. Power plant means, when we say uh, power plant, sorry, there's a typo there. Power plant is the main sources of noise during the takeoff, uh, during takeoff. So if we break down, if we break down the noise sources on this particular diagram here, you can see the fan, the compressor, combustion turbine, and jet exhaust causes a huge uh, uh, noise. And then if you combine the whole power plant, there's another graph next to it. You can see the sources of the power plant is huge source of noise, where there is a compressor, combustion turbine. And then after that, we're gonna move to the airframe. Airframe, we have flaps, slats, and that actually created the total aircraft noise. Okay, these are the systems that create aircraft noise. Yeah, you can see here the environmental control system, the air compacts, the cabin flowing through the air, the air in the mixed manifold, the hydraulic bay, the landing gear component bay, the air con base. These are all the systems that is actually creating uh, aircraft noises. Yeah, so we need to look into ways of how to reduce this noise by designing better better components or better systems yeah engine as far as the engine is concerned um, <clears throat> we need to uh, find ways uh, to develop new technology yeah uh, new liners uh, new internal liners we need to improve our family design we need to have the uh, gap optimize the gap between the blades and the casings we need to have stronger uh, strut uh, what they call it uh, support yeah we need to have a burner that have an efficient burning and also low noise low noise with uh, uh, vibration all these are all potential uh, sources the challenges every challenge becomes an opportunity so if you look at all the challenges here it is also means that there is also a, a, a advancement opportunity here for us to reduce the, uh, to design something or develop something that reduce the noise. And also, uh, we have been using noise cancellation attenuation device on the aircraft. We sometimes, in, uh, on some of the engine that I work on, they actually put an electronic uh, attenuation de devices on the, air, on the engine itself, mounted it somewhere. The purpose is actually to reduce the noise or reduce the vibration. 
Yeah. Uh, further advancement in aerodynamics, definitely we have to do this. Yeah, uh, I guess that is why we are, have, we are here today. Uh, we need to have advanced uh, in uh, aerodynamic design. We need to have, we need to study uh, more in depth into what noise is all, is all about. We need to go into deeper uh, the, the issue, the study of the noise. We need to actually study about the, the vortices generated by the aircraft. We need to study about the fairing. We need to have new material. We need to have new paint. We are able to, we, were, we have been able to create stealth technology that absorb radar signal. What about creating a technology, a paint technology that create, that actually absorb noise from the engine? You know, all these are possible further advancement that we can look at. And, and, and lastly, one of the very important thing is that the approach to noise control is no more one party, no more just the aircraft manufacturer, it's no more. We have to find a balanced approach, a balanced aircraft noise management, and this is actually promoted by IKO. Yeah, there is a document for it. We need to, the noise control, noise management, we have to look at the noise at source, which is the airplane and the engine, land use planning management, uh, operational measures, what, how do we operate the aircraft and then operating restrictions. This is more than, more than just, the, uh, just the responsibility of the manufacturer, it's more than that, yeah? And more important thing, and I always encourage this, industrial academy collaboration in terms of R&D, in terms of innovation. It is very important so that data, actual operating parameters, actual feedbacks, you know, actual uh, parameters, actual data are actually feedback and collected, back, uh, returned back from the industry to the academia to make sure that the research can go on and actually come up with a better uh, technology and design. Okay, sustainable aviation. Yeah, officially, I can, I can, based on my research, since 2005, they have taken it very, very seriously sustainable aviation by various stakeholders, aircraft manufacturer, engine manufacturer, component manufacturer, operator, authority, and then the air navigation service provider. And these stakeholders have to communicate and lies with the industry so that there is a better overall, uh, better overall uh, uh, control, uh, come up with a good, better strategy. Okay. And my conclusion is sustainable aviation is the direction into the future. The blueprint for the noise uh, rock, uh, roadmap has already been laid up until the year 2050. You can see how far from it uh, from now. And I would like to end this, that pollution should never be... Uh, <clears throat> be uh, because I cannot see that thing. Should never be the price of prosperity. We, we're going to prosper. We got good technology. We're going to design. But pollution should not be... Uh, the price of prosperity, okay? And that was actually spoken by a, a former vice president of America, very strong environmentalist uh, that he has shared with us, okay? And thank you, and sorry, it's a question and answers. <laughs> 10 minutes more. Thank you, uh, technologist uh, adjunct professor Ricky Liu uh, for the inspiring and uh, very, uh, what do you call, informative uh, lecture. Okay. Um. Actually, um. I am as a what do you call? Uh, I'm concerned. I'm focusing on unmanned aerial vehicles. So there are some concern about because on the the noise uh, made by these small UAV or small drones, because um drone has been what do you call widely used now for a lot of applications. Um. Uh, and uh, this would be an eye opener. I'm not sure about um, uh, about drone. You have ICAO and FAA for uh, aeroplanes and uh, aircrafts, and uh, I'm sure that there will be such body for for to control the drones. Anyway, we will wait um, for uh, uh, kindly post your questions in the uh, chat box for the audience. 
or you can just uh, uh, unmute your mic and uh, pose a question directly to uh, our speaker. Uh, Ricky, it is a very oh. good um, presentation just now. Eh? Uh, probably uh, to continue from what Dr. Sharil mentioned about whether drones uh, noise. Of course, drones are very noisy. It is, uh, it is a factor of privacy and it flies like a bee, a big bee, eh? <laughs> here and there. So is it that the, in Malaysia, CAM also look into the uh, drones, especially on the, uh, the noise from the drone? Okay. Um, CAM is looking in the drone, but now primarily uh, they, are, uh, they are coming up with uh, focusing on a lot of policies. Uh, the policies are actually the, the area, the high control, uh, whether there's a clearance requirements, uh, uh, what is the weight allowed and all those. Coming to the noise uh, perspective, uh, I believe it has not gone into to that level yet. Uh, yes, you are, you are right, uh, Prof. Um, these drones are actually sometimes very, very noisy. And actually, it actually uh, uh, is a kind of uh, encroaching into our privacy, our privacy uh, as well. Uh, but I believe as this uh, policy or this operation getting more and more intense, uh, definitely the authority, uh, one of the aspects that the authority will, authority will need to actually look into is actually uh, noise uh, control. Um, I'm sure that is uh, in, in the pipeline. It's just that I don't think that is uh, very well written up yet. Yep, Prof. Thank you. Any other questions? You know, the I, I, I always have the feeling, you know, um, most of us actually are, are uh, aircraft user or, 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 you know, we don't actually uh, look into the noise, aircraft noise as a pollution in a very, very serious way, you know? And that is why you can see uh, the complaints in Malaysia compared to the US and the UK or in the Western countries, it is very severe. It is very severe. Uh, but in Malaysia, not so much. But it is timely that ISSA to get SARS and all those activities start coming on. Because sometimes the noise affecting the health, the health impact to the, uh, to the human being, sometimes people don't realize it. It is through this kind of, uh, uh, you know, symposium that we start educating the public, you know, look, you know, it has been proven that it has, it has an impact on health. And therefore, therefore, we need to do something about it before it becomes too late. That is what my, my personal opinion is. You know, I never really, I never really go into noise if it is not because of this, <laughs> the presentation today. <laughs> so in a way, it also gives me an opportunity to study more about the subject. Thank you very much, Ricky. It is uh, quite a good uh, insight where awareness on noise is not that, uh, yeah, no, nobody bother about noise, whether we can make complaints or whether it is uh, governed through a certain authority body. Eh? Um, uh, yep. Sharil? Okay. Uh, by that, I think we have another five minutes from the, uh, for, before we go to the next session. Uh, if you have any other questions, please post them in um, in the chat box later. Um, maybe uh, Ajang Professor Ricky can address them privately, or maybe they can uh, uh, address them through us uh, for your questions. So uh, by that, I would like to thank thank again uh, Ajang Professor Ricky Liu for his speech and his uh, very informative uh, sharing today. So um, for other participants, you are encouraged to join our breakout session A1 and B1. The link is being posted in the... Oh, sorry. Is, there is a one last question. Is it okay? How many decibels is considered a noise and noise pollution? Uh, can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. I just... Uh, okay. Uh, how many decibels is considered a noise and noise? Uh... The decibels that is actually above 70 and 80, we become very, we, we can actually prolong exposure, can start irritating us really. 70, usually that is the time that we, we get, you know, we get a, a, a little bit of a, a noise. About 70 decibels. You can see from the vacuum cleaner at your house, you know, maybe for five minutes vacuuming, no problem. 
one hour in vacuuming, then you will start you will start jumping. <laughs> so generally, 70, 70 is uh, above seventy is start irritating really. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Because that's a, a quick question from Mr. Kanan Perumal in the chat box. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Sorry uh, for that. So, uh, okay, by that, I would like to end the session. Thank you very much, everybody. And please check the uh, the link in our chat box. Okay, bye. Have a good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.